when Vampire Weekend came out, especially with the song Holiday on Contra, we were actively trying to start the fourth wave of ska. It's debatable whether we did. I mean, actually, no, we did. There was no way. But we made. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's debatable. We made a we made a ska song, and you know, it did all right. Welcome to Vampire Campfire. I'm Ezra. I'm Bayo. I'm CT. We're hanging out here in the back of our clubhouse, outdoors, like we usually do, sitting by the fire. Making plans. Making plans. Can you believe that this is what people have been doing for millions of years? Something beautiful about it. Just sit, sitting by the fire, recording a podcast. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is something we, we do a lot, and we decided why not roll some cameras record, and record some audio uh, for a podcast? Um, this is a, a special time for Vampire Weekend as we're about to have five albums in stores with the release of Only God Was Above Us on April 5th. So if you want to pre-order the album now, which you should, go to vampireweekend.com or any website that sells vinyl. Just search. Just like, search. New album. It's or a beautiful something. record. The album has been announced now. You probably know that if you're listening. Who knows? Maybe somebody saw Vampire Weekend podcast or stumbled across this. And here you are. Well, oh, yeah, we're a band, by the way. Oh, that's yeah, important. If, I forgot about that. Yeah. If you're really new, new to this. We announced the album. We dropped two songs, Capricorn and Gen X. Cops. Gen X Cops, right. We call Gen X Cops Gen X. We call the album Agwao. Right. Mm -hmm. O-G-W-A-U. And by the way, if you hear any noises here and there, we are sitting in front of a real fire. We're kind of near a rooster, and it's raining. They're all pretty pleasant sounds. Beautiful. If you catch a little bit of them, hopefully they're relaxing. We're in a kind of interesting zone now because I, f I find that it's a lot easier to talk about our albums when we're uh, reflecting. You know, like mm -hmm. when, when, when they've come out, time has passed, you already kind of saw how people reacted to it. You know what people think. You know the impressions, the, the wrong impression, whatever. You just have more information. We're in this weird zone now where we announce the album. I think the art tells a story. I think the video tells a story. Of course, I think the songs tell a story. But, you know, this is the modern world. You got to create content. You got to do press. And I found that in the past, you start people start asking you like your influences or what the album's about. You could say one thing. You could say something impressionistic and that ends up setting a narrative or a tone that maybe is, is more serious than one might have intended. Exactly. And also, you know, when you look backwards at classic albums, the artist can't be going out just d talking about them in those terms saying, I really wanted to like tackle this, you know, I wanted to explore what it means to be a human in 2024. All this stuff sounds terrible. It sounds cool in retrospect. Maybe it sounds cool in retrospect. It sounds cool if somebody else says it. I felt like in the past, when I've talked about influences, I just noticed that they get repeated over and over again. I always think with Father of the Bride, way before the album came out, an interview was set up. I remember I was walking to the gym. Well, yeah, I was, was, was about, your mind half in the gym at that point? I think so. Yeah. On the way so, to the gym, you're thinking about the gym. So when they asked me what I, what I was like, influences, I said, so, and I remember I'd just seen a Casey Musgraves concert. Someone was like asking me, like, yeah, what are some influences? And I, was, and I was talking about country music. I said, I just saw Casey Musgraves. It was a great show. It was just one of those things that then I felt like people kept repeating, influenced by Casey Musgraves. And I just kind of felt like, I, I don't know. I mean, I, the, she's cool, so who cares? I just remember having that feeling of like, right, you say something and then it gets repeated over and over again. Also, on this album, we already got a little taste of the kind of misdirect with the influences. Right, well, because in the newsletter, which is part of our vinyl live series, we talked about what we've been up to and sort of we're 
presenting loosely life the idea updates. as we were finishing the record. Yeah. Yes. Uh, of life since Father of the Bride. Which which maybe is good for the podcast if we just do if people haven't seen the newsletter. Right. Just the quick what was your wrap up of the last five years? My wrap up was that I uh, did jury duty with a famous actor's husband. That's already like a year and a half ago now. Major. Um, it would be kind of interesting to make a concept album about serving jury duty in Los Angeles. I'm going to chug that away, but um, I also talked about a record that I've been finishing up with this project of mine called CYM. Those are my main two updates, I guess. That was Which in the first just got program. mastered and it sounds great. It, it did, it just got, got mastered. mastered. Yeah, very excited to share it with you gentlemen. Years. I know there's some Taper's Choice. Taper's Choice, which is the jam band uh, that's taking Southern California by storm and pretty, you know, just generalized stuff, getting sober, having two kids, you know, nothing big, Major. nothing big. And then mine that turned into a bit of this like influence repetition thing, which again, I'm not judging anybody. That's how it works in the mimetic world. I talked about meeting Terry Riley, the legendary composer, and taking a raga singing lesson with him. And that's basically just because I was living in Japan with my family. My wife was working there, a lot of time on my hands. One of my friends said, you know who lives in Japan? In rural Japan. I said, who? He said, Terry Riley, legendary composer. I've always been a big fan. Anybody who doesn't know, even like before Philip Glass and stuff, he was doing minimalist composition, in C, live at Carnegie Hall, amazing. Um, a little bit later, Rainbow and Curved Air, the synth stuff, very influential. And at some point, I think in the 70s, he became an acolyte of a uh, Indian guru, uh, specifically who was teaching music. He learned through this kind of uh, this oral tradition of how you teach somebody by singing and they repeat after you. And um, anyway, I met him. He was a cool guy, really beautiful human being. He was so sweet. The first time we kind of talked, he said, "You know, we played the same festival in Knoxville, Tennessee." It's got to be big ears. Got to be big ears. Twenty ten. Twenty ten. Did a raga singing lesson with him. Went out to his apartment, rural Japan. He sings, you sing, very beautiful music, just great being around him. Um, so anyway, I wanted to share that with the, in our newsletter, just as like something interesting that I'd done. Is it an influence on this album? It couldn't be. Our albums take too long. And I got a question. What would <laughs> yeah. you say the influences are on this album? Well, I've been thinking about it, and I've prepared a statement. And you already went to the gym today. And so I already went to the gym. Yeah, clear head. I pumped iron. <laughs> Actually, today I listened to the Brothers Johnson in the gym. But normally, the truth is, I play Black Sabbath in the gym. What do you guys play in the gym? My favorite workout band, ultimately, would be Underworld, the great okay. techno act. Right. If you're doing cardio, you listen to dance music, and you're pumping it's, iron. It's pretty good for da- if we're pumping iron, pumping too. Pumping iron, too? All right. Yeah. Two type of guys in this world. Yeah. Dance music and metal dudes in the gym. Well, here's Which the, are you? And here's the third type. Yeah. You guys tend to be largely similar in your interests, and I'd mm. like you guys... I historically and very famously prefer road rules over the real world. That's right. <laughs> or hard tacos over soft tacos. You know, this is a, These are, a yeah, theme. Yeah, they're they're personality that, types. That's, yeah, a, yeah. that's a major thing. Anybody grew up in the 90s, you either prefer real world or road rules. The vast majority of people I've met in my life prefer real world. Oh, yeah. I just think you get to know the characters <laughs> a little more. But if there's CT's, no, like, tasks. There's right. No, like, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So yeah, you're, yeah. you're task-oriented. So you prefer... Road rolls, which I think is a big deal. And then to prefer hard shell tacos over soft shell tacos, I don't even think they make hard shell tacos anymore. I mean, they, they exist. <laughs> yeah. Usually maybe within the confines of like a double decker with the, you know, right. the piece of guacamole yeah. in the middle. No, sort of but I, I respect it. It's very unusual choices and it's, it's part of, makes you a unique person. So um, but to please that go end, on. Yeah. Um, I listen to audiobooks. Nice. In the gym? I just need to turn off like the front of my brain yeah. and get into the, you know, whatever I'm accessing mm. uh, in whatever move I am or I'm not doing. So anyway, back to the influences of Agwao. I tried to put together something kind of impressionistic because it's weird. It's like we're not trying to be all mysterious or something, but you also get a little tight-lipped at times when you're rolling out an album. You don't want to say the wrong thing. You don't want to well, You don't over... want to color someone's experience of it. Yeah, because the... I, think, I think some of our fans... I think we have some fans that don't even listen to the singles because right. they want to take it in as an album. Totally. And I remember back in the day 
we posted the Father the Bride album art and was kind of like opening it and showing it. And there were some people who were like, whoa, whoa, no spoilers. Anyway, this is what I put together. A little poem of influences. 20th century New York City, mistaken memories of medieval Manhattan when the Beastie Boys lived in LA. Pre-punk, proto-punk, K-punk, not really A-punk, junk, Big Muff, Hoboken, Nutley, Yonkers, Cascab, the five towns, the five families, the five love languages, Sisters of Mercy, Brother Lawrence, Book of Hours, Russian icons, San Mandalas, Natarajas, Hexine Barnes, Ando Churches, Whirling Dervishes, Psychedelic Gershwin, Wire, Plain Jane Indy, David Axelrod, Steven Siegel, New Wave Hot Dogs, Old World Elegance, The Rizza, The Jizza, Old Dirty Bastard, Inspector Deck, Raekwon the Chef, You God, Ghostface Killer, and M-E-T, H-O-D, Man, Ball Hogs, Sand Hogs, and the greatest non-defense construction project in the history of Western civilization. Once again, that's Only God Was Above that's Us. Only God Was Above <laughs> Available Us. Available for pre-order now. Coming soon. If you like what you heard there. I love that. Wait till you hear the music. And that feels, in the last way, there were no spoilers in there. Well, there are uh, a couple there's of hints couple, and, There were some, some morsels know? in there. There were some Easter eggs. Yeah, Easter, Easter eggs. Yeah, 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 yeah. there's some Easter eggs. Do you want to talk at all about the two songs? Because that's yeah, yeah. something they're out. Right, the two songs are out. In a way that out. we can discuss them more openly. This is a tough one to pick the singles on. We had long talks over camp. Um, we, we, yeah, we actually did. We did. Yeah, 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 we had a campfire, a vampire campfire discussion about the singles. Ten songs. It's all killer. No filler. Something about these two felt like a, a good blend. I think we all ended up on the same page. We like that Capricorn is one of the best Vampire Weekend songs ever. And it felt cool to lead with it, even though it's kind of like slow. Um, but it's still like big and it's got like a heaviness. Exciting, so, you know, absolutely. It's, you know, like some people called it a ballad. I don't exactly think of it as a ballad. The te- I mean, it's, it's a slower tempo. Yeah. And there are some softer parts. But right. I think, uh, taken as a whole, it, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like a ballad. Yeah, thing. it's definitely it's a head nod tempo, not really a ballad. And then Gen X is fast and pumped up. And you know what I realized recently is one of the only like minor key singles we've ever had. We have very few minor key songs. Period. I think Hudson. Yeah. Yeah. Gen X. Um, oh, I mean, so first minor key single. I think so. In the Oof? I think so. Yeah. If that's incorrect. Bear will know. No, yeah. that's 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 that yeah. sounds right. Okay, yeah. and that one's interesting because you know CT, you and I started that song a long de- time ago, decade ago. To me, five years between records feels good and appropriate. I don't know how people do a record once a year, every two years. I mean, to be fair, yeah, we had a stretch where we did that. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, right. We yeah. had to. We had to make yeah. it while the the sun shone. <laughs> um. No, I get that. And also, you know, like when you're in your 20s, it makes it's sense. It's a different, it's different, yeah. different game. When people out here just doing like, got that crazy pace in their 30s. I guess not everybody like tours the way we do. Like when we tour, we tour. Yeah, absolutely. And when we don't tour, we, we, really, we, don't, we really don't, don't tour. tour. And then you could just like hang out and uh, live normal life and all that stuff. But anyway, yeah, sometimes it just takes a long time to kind of see what a song can be. But we made that earliest demo in your apartment back in Brooklyn. 2012? Yeah, could have been. Yeah, that was 2012. Yeah, and what did you play on the, the earliest demo, thing? the slide thing on? There was a, I don't know if it's still around, there was a, a shop called Southside Guitars, I believe, where I would always kind of window shop. It was yeah. like South Williamsburg. Um, and it was just this, it was this combo lap steel and like little amp. Yeah. And classic me, like in a deal, it's like, oh, cool, I'm getting two things for one. I'm nice. not just paying for the instrument, I'm getting a little <laughs> right. amp as well Frugal. that I can use for other yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. instruments. Uh, so I think I bought that somewhere in the months previous. Not, I didn't have it for yeah. that long. Like most instruments, I have to say, including drums, I didn't really dig in. Yeah. And I just kind of like trusted and hoped for some sort of natural savanti aptitude. Yeah. Um, and I think, I believe... That part in particular was written on one string, so I didn't have to do any of the difficult um, oh, right. switching yeah, or yeah. something like that. Uh, but yeah, it was like a little lap steel, probably 50s. I don't know. Yeah. I still, I mean, it's in, it's in the studio that Chris and I share now. So right. it's still around. They can bring out some, maybe a future campfire, bring, bring it here. I like that in the, in the final recording, 
and it being kind of like distorted and stuff. Sometimes I play that for people and they just don't even know what it is. Yeah. That, that sound was uh, trending on my wife's family's text thread. Text oh, really? Thread. Yeah, on the, the, the day that the tracks were what coming out. What is that out. sound? It sounds so cool. What is that? Okay. It yeah, was, that, that was, you know, It sounds a it little like a synth or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah, so I always knew that was a cool demo. It didn't have, or it, well, it didn't have the chorus that I wanted to go with the A section, so that's why it took a long time. When it didn't really fit, it didn't seem to fit in uh, the Modern Vampire zone, and even less so, yeah. I would say, in the Father of the Bride zone. Yeah. But yeah, like you, you said it, in multiple ways over the years that if there's a cool thing, whether it's a demo or an idea, like it sticks around. Right. And it'll like, maybe the right time presents itself and it's there. Yeah, every dog has his day. When the band started, Nobody was like a master of their particular instrument. But so I've always said that from the jump, Vampire Weekend, it has to have like an amateurish quality or whatever. There's something about where the amateur meets the it's ambitious. like handmade, it's personal. Yeah, that kind of handmade thing. And I think that's something we've always held on to. Um, and there is something nice about, what is that? There's something people, somebody says, right? Beginner's mind, that's a phrase, right? Right. I don't know, yeah. something about creativity. Well, was that like Lennon like writing on piano? Uh, John Lennon of John the Beatles? Lennon, not Vladimir. Um, but something like at a certain point Breaking writing out on of guitar. The instrument he, you know. His, his, his hand knew the shapes and he didn't right. feel like it was creative in a maybe a beginner's mind right. kind of way. That the piano recaptured that for some amount of time. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, I think about, there's a riff I wrote essentially in middle school that I, keep, I put, I've put on mood boards for like every album since Contra. Can we ever play it with you? I think so. Oh, you, you'll remember. I, know, I, know I don't want to say yeah, it in, okay, case, I know, I know in exactly case we which use one it in 10 years. About. Yeah, yeah, and I know exactly which I took some about. heart because I read that, um, this, that Radiohead Tom song. Tom York, yeah, yeah, yeah. National, National Anthem. anthem. The legendary. Right. He wrote that childhood riff. School. Yeah. Everybody needs a childhood riff. And this one, I've gone over the years between thinking it was cool, thinking it was uncool, I made different demos of it. I've tried it with different people. But again, I think one day it'll work out and then we'll probably be sitting here on the campfire recording a podcast in- 20 years. In 20 years yeah. and I'll say, you know how old this riff is? This is one of the oldest riffs. 45 year old riff? Yeah, the 45 year old riff. That'd be a good name for an album, the 40 year old <laughs> riff. I actually, I actually have written this down before. I always thought a funny name for an album. Although this would totally be like, when we're kind of like on some like who gives a shit, old dude, like weird sense of humor is an album called The 40 Year Old Email. I just always thought that was funny. I was, but everything about it is like so, it, it was so random. Just like, was that a reference to The 40 Year Old Virgin? <laughs> yes, but it's called The 40 Year Old <laughs> Email. Cause I always thought that was funny just to picture a 40 year old email, which there probably are some. There must be now, by now. When, yeah. when, did, the, yeah, right. when did the internet get started? <laughs> Should we talk about the tour? We are going on tour. Uh, after the new album, Only God Was Above Us, comes out on April 5th. We have some well, one-off shows, the, but then a the, big tour coming The up. first show is on April 8th. Which is a special day. It's Very a special reasons. day. But special day. So. But mostly special because there's a total eclipse in Austin, and we'll be playing a show during it. That's also a very special day, because it's your 40th birthday. That's true. Will you be but doing 40 shots after the show? After the show. But again, I don't. The, it's not about that. That's not what this. The show is all about the music, that's and then true. of course the cosmic event, the eclipse. But then I think later that night, we'll all be there. We have you know friends and family in town. Um, so yeah, I would. I've never done forty shots, <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to try. <laughs> I'll make sure I get a gut full of cornbread yeah, and barbecue, some newspaper with a big fat piece of Wonder Bread, <laughs> some ribs, some baked beans. To prepare. To, yeah, absolutely. And then I'm going to do 40 shots. So that, <laughs> that'll be a very special show. Yeah. Our first time back on stage since Pentaport Festival in Korea. Uh, yes. Yes, absolutely. 21 months-ish. No, but I love that. Ended headlining our, what was far and away our greatest show in Korea ever. Oh, Easily. That big show time. Big time, big time. ripped. It was so cool. I think it's worth telling the Oh, there is the a notorious yes. story from <laughs> that, 20, 2013. Um, which, which we call the, the Burt Wonderstone. The Burt Wonderstone, <laughs> you know, the first summer after Modern Vampires of the City came out, we played Hannah Hunt before Walcott as our penultimate song, which 
beautiful song, important song, was a new song at the time, and also one that CT would have his eyes closed while he would drum. Help so you stay in the moment. I, I, the I would character. have to look at the set list um, and see what we played before that. Maybe we played A Punk or something. Crowd's going wild. We click into Hannah, Hannah Hunt. Hunt. Quiet. Your eyes are closed. There's maybe 10,000 people in the crowd. We get to the end of a song successfully completed. <laughs> CT, you open your eyes and what do you see? I see most of the crowd has vanished. The crowd has vanished. We, we disappeared thousands of people over the course of four and a half minutes. And I imagine everybody knows, everybody's seen the film, The Incredible <laughs> or Wonderstone. But if you haven't, that was a comedy about magicians. You know how in The Prestige, the whole movie is about them trying to do this trick, the, the disappearing man, and just figuring, how do they do that? In Burt Wonderstone, the obsession in the movie is how do you make the crowd disappear? Because the whole joke is any magician can make themselves disappear. Seen that a million times. Oh, yeah. But a true magician can make the crowd disappear. So that's to play Hannah Hunt. <laughs> yeah, and so we found out, the CT found out that's how you do it is play Hannah Hunt. But I like that. And in Penaport Festival in Korea, come back, Total Eclipse in Austin. That's not like the tour per se. Yeah. We're not getting on a bus for a minute, but we have some no. shows. So, yeah, so what's right. after? So what's I, guess, after well, I guess I just, I, I wonder, maybe we should talk about how we have a new band and stuff and we're in this in-between period and yeah. we're getting ready to tour and all that stuff. And, you know, really what a lot of the work is that's happening right now is we're getting together every day yes. with we, the new band and playing all the time right. and coming up with all these the new band. ideas and stuff like um, that. It's hard to top the Father the Bride tour loved everybody we played with mm, yeah. um but our boy brian he's out with paramore right now they're i believe they'll be crushing it with taylor Absolutely. swift all year they're putting in the work in on the big on, on the eras tour greta people who like follow her on social media knows that she's been on a journey she, she's in, in great spirits but you know she's been on a journey with her voice and written a and book all. i can't wait to read her book yeah oh, that's right yeah so you know obviously that's on the one hand the crazy thing for any singer to go through is losing control of your voice due to health issues, whatever. She's dealing with all that, but she, she, she's in a great place. But we, um, we found two new people, Colin and Ray, who at first we were just like, well, I guess we need some people to cover guitar and keys. And we should but, also say Will and Garrett, who were with oh, us then, of last course, time, Will, and will be with us again yeah. this time. Garrett, auxiliary percussion, uh, Will Canzanari, keyboard shredder. But then we found two people, Colin and Ray, who not only play keyboard and guitar, but this insane bonus is that Colin is a masterful saxophonist and Ray's a masterful violinist and plays pedal steel. And so we've just been having a ball, not only working on the new material, but going back to the old material. Yep. And I could give a little taste. I queued up a little taste for the people. I mean, this is just, a, we record our practices, you know, so that we can listen back. Like this is what we've been working on for uh, Sunflower. So far, familiar. This feels right. Love the sound. We always knew that this would be a song we'd probably do a million different versions of. Um, you can hear the violin very prominently. There's sax in there too, yeah. Oh yeah. Just ripping solos. Okay, so the album is the least reggae, but you know maybe in the, the live, live show, show it's the still most reggae. We'll yeah, see. now it's still part of it. We're gonna go out on this tour. We're gonna nail the Agwao material. Um, here's a little sax. Okay, you get the idea. But yeah, <laughs> you know it's important for us that the show kind of like showcases the new album, but we gotta have our mix it up too and um so yeah the 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 live band is killer and one thing we should also tell people is that as probably some of you have seen our openers on this tour a gorgeous patchwork of many different artists that mean something to us you know sometimes people put together a package tour and just go out and do it mm -hmm. absolutely nothing wrong with that we just kind of felt, especially for some of the artists we wanted, we could probably only get them for First, certain yeah. legs. Yeah. And we've, we've kind of started something last time that we, at least in New York and LA, we put together special bills and we wanted to kind of bring that energy more to the whole country. So the first leg, 
starting in Houston is with La Lome, Los Angeles League of Musicians. Yeah, I actually just saw them uh, play here at the Wiltern opening for Corey Wong on, a couple days ago. Oh, sick. It's like of a time, but they do it really well and there's, it just feels really natural and it's, it's very easy to get into. Like, yeah. I, did, I had never heard a single note and then halfway through the first song, you sort of like, you get it and you want to move. It's a great vibe. I love the guitarist. Yeah. There's something about the way he dances around the neck. It just really speaks to me. Then we will be playing the Hollywood Bowl for the fourth time oh, on yeah. June 12th. This is our fourth time at the Hollywood Bowl. We thought about switching it up. Los Angeles, second biggest city in America, lots of great venues. Hollywood Bowl just feels right. Such a unique place. And so for that one, we want to do a special bill. We decided to go with a genre that's very influential to Vampire Weekend. Something we all share. Something we Absolutely. all share, Absolutely. which is love of ska. And all the waves. All the waves of ska. You know, when, when Vampire Weekend came out, especially with the song Holiday on Contra, we were actively trying to start the fourth wave of ska. It's debatable whether we did. I mean, actually, no, we did. There was no way. <laughs> but we made, yeah, I don't think it's debatable. We made, a, we made a ska song and, you know, did all right, but we didn't start the wave. <laughs> And you know, and even A Punk, yeah, A Punk has a touch of ska. Like yeah, people, absolutely. and of course, ska. Maybe it's past waves. It's just an ocean now. It's just an ocean of great music. And so for this bill, it was especially fun because we put together Voodoo Glow Skulls. Did we all listen to Voodoo Glow Skulls in, in yeah, yeah, growing absolutely. up? Yeah, absolutely. I love Voodoo Glow Skulls. I had a Voodoo Glow Skulls T-shirt. I was obsessed with their cover of Here Comes the Sun. And so Voodoo Glow Skulls, you know, like they came into prominence in the 90s. For anybody who doesn't know, so they'd be considered a third wave ska punk. And I love like the energy and just like legendary band. Um, so they'll be on the bill. And then we went back a little bit further to the second wave of ska with the English beat. Um, and Dave Wakeling is just like a, such a legend, such a huge influence on Vampire Weekend. So Voodoo Glow Skulls, English beat, the dubs. Vampire Weekend, and the yeah, dubs. Yeah, beautiful. Three different waves of ska. Honestly, we're not pulling our weight because we failed to actually be part of a wave of ska, but... Well, we got to do ska versions of some of our songs. Yes. So we got, we've been talking about it, like... Scottaman, Skana Hunt. Ska, we got to bring some of that. Yeah. We were messing around a little bit with a kind of... And, and also, I think it's not going to... If you don't like ska, I don't know what your fucking problem is, but <laughs> don't worry. We're not going to do an all ska show, but we'll, we'll have to have a moment. We've been talking about it. We might not do, we might end up not well, doing it. And also, maybe, we yeah. don't have to do all ska punk either, because like we could do like a very tasteful kind of like Absolutely. slow rock steady version yeah. of, of Hannah Hunt. That would be great. Something like that. Be so that'll be a very special show, very special bill. Excited about that one. And then, all right, what's, what's it? Then we go big weekend, Father's Day weekend, and an important weekend in the history yeah. of the band, obviously, but we're going to be doing Saturday night and Sunday afternoon at the Greek Theater in Berkeley. In Berkeley, yeah. Legendary venue. And that's when we begin the next leg of the tour with a, an opener that CT helped. A hero, a hero of mine. Um, put together. Mike Gordon, uh, best known as the bassist from Fish, but did some albums with Leo Kaki and, you know, obviously as a long time, very public facing Fish fan. It's amazing to get to share the stage with him and play with him and... From starting in Berkeley, then going to... Bend? Outside Vancouver, oh. Burnaby, BC Burnaby. Canada, Deer yeah. Lake Park Festival, and we had a great show there I love in 2019. That show. Yeah, I love that show in 2019. Great to go back. Yeah. Very excited about playing Climate Pledge Arena in Seattle. That'll be on June 20th. And then we're finishing up with a, another uh, Saturday night, Sunday afternoon, twofer in Bonner, Montana, outside of Missoula, Montana, a very important town to yeah, our band. Yeah, pe people don't understand that. We put in the work in Montana. People think Vampire Weekend were jet setting between New York and LA. Early days, we had a real connection with Missoula, Montana. Is it fair to say it's mostly because of my friend Timmy Donahue. Entirely because of your okay. friend. Yeah, yeah. I knew a guy from New Jersey. I grew up with uh, both friends of mine, Donahue brothers. Tim Donahue left Jersey, and he ended up uh, going to college at Missoula. Um, and he was a little bit involved with the radio station. So early days, we're hitting the road. Where can we play? Emailing people, whatever. And he hooked us up with our first show at, I don't even know where the first The Badlander? Show. Yes. The Badlander. And I remember we were walking around and Tim showed us that right there is the Wilma Theater. That's where the big dogs play when, when they come to Missoula. 
and we got we had our eyes on that. We said we're going to come back and we're going to play the the Wilma one day, which we did very we did. twenty times. Yeah. That was great. And those shows are an evening with. Right. So that's another thing is that we're we are trying to we're coming up with fun ideas and we don't have an opener. Yes. N- not because we couldn't find one, but because we wanted to try something special and something fun for those two shows. And maybe it's yeah, a couple sets. See. We'll see, see what, what it we is. We've got to see what the atmosphere is like with no opener. Probably play a bit longer, try something different. I also feel like it seems so beautiful out there. That's, uh, I think we'll have a few, few people wanting to come through. Just so people know, the other openers, we have Rara Riot, who, if anybody doesn't know, they're a, a band that came out around the same time as Vampire Weekend. We're down at Columbia. They're up at Syracuse, which is also why many of our early shows were in Syracuse, because mm-hmm. we had a Syracuse connection. They sponsored our first out-of-city shows. Yes, mm-hmm. and, and Wes the Singer is one of my oldest friends. I've known him since I was four years old. Um, a great band. Very excited that they're going to be back on the road. Kingfish in Colorado. Oh, we got right Kingfish in Colorado. Too. Now, anybody doesn't know, he's a young blues legend, and he opened for us on a bunch of the Father the Bride tour. Um, He's the man. Um, very excited for that out at uh, Red Rocks. And then a really special one in Chicago is Ra Riot, but also Princess, which is Maya Rudolph's Prince cover band. And I've seen them before, and they slay. She's a diehard Prince fan. She knows the music inside and out. Can't wait. That's going to be sick. So those would be really special shows. Then who else we got? We got Colts. Opened we for go, us 10 years ago. We go way back with Colts. So that's a lot of the Northeast and stuff, but the uh, a very special bill that we're putting together in our hometown, New York. And this is just one I, I want to highlight mm-hmm. because, I mean, a lot of you already got your tickets. We we love playing the Garden so much uh, on Father the Bride. I count that as one one of our top three best shows. It has to be. Mm-hmm. I mean, and people, it's funny. I'm sure you guys get this too. People say like, oh, you're a musician. You go on tour. What's your favorite venue to play? And I said, it might sound basic. Madison Square Garden, you know, whatever. Bands from New York. It's a very special place. So of course we wanted to go back, but we want to do something different. So this time we're playing Saturday night and Sunday day. And as if that wasn't enough, because New York is so special to us, we have made a climate pledge. <laughs> We've made a regular pledge, maybe not a climate pledge, that we're doing no repeats. So that means two entirely different sets, except a punk, Saturday night, Sunday. All the shows are going to be great, but like you know, we have to do something really special for our hometown. And on top of that, the bill is absolutely bananas. This unhinged. Is, I, people are saying unhinged. People are saying yeah, it's yeah. one of our most unhinged bills of all time. But I think it's very us now. The one musician who towers above all the rest when it comes to the garden is Billy Joel. And he's uh, a New York legend, king of Long Island. Absolutely, I'm a huge fan, always loved him. I mean, and anybody who grew up in, in the tri-states gotta love Billy Joel, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. Growing up with those radio stations, they play deep cut Billy Joel. Oh, yeah. Classic, for sure. Classic oh, yeah. Q104, they're playing album tracks. Oh, yeah. We're from BJ country. Now, of course, we would never disrespect the great man by, by assuming that when he, with his busy schedule that he would have time to stop by our show. You know, he's, he's got new music out. That's a big ask. Yeah, yeah definitely. so we, we love his music, but so you know we said, well, there's a lot of people who love his music. And you know who else loves his music? America's greatest Billy Joel cover band, Turnstiles, fronted by Tony Monaco. And everything about it just felt right because we checked out Turnstiles. They got a lot of cool stuff on YouTube. Everything I've seen, these guys bring the house down every they time. They look amazing. But as if that wasn't enough, because it's New York, we like to have the friends and family vibe. Like last time we played The Garden, it was New York legend Despot did an incredible show with the, the car dealerships, air dancers on stage. Then we had Anjali Kijo, who's been a friend to Vampire Weekend since the earliest days, legendary singer. So we're psyched to have uh, turnstiles, but we also got some friends to DJ. And Saturday night, in between the music, we're going to have New York legend Mark Ronson DJing. For the Sunday show, we got the brothers Maklovich, Dave and Alan, also known as A-Track and Dave One. 
And any old school Vampire Weekend fans know that Chromio has been dear friends of Vampire Weekend. They probably watched the Woody's performance. Yeah, they probably yeah, saw yeah, us definitely. play Kids Don't Stand a Chance and, and have heard their legendary remix of Kids Don't Stand a Chance. So to uh, have those guys in the house will be special. So that's a very special bill um, for New York only, and it's going to be a very fun weekend. And I, kn- I know we're, we're kind of close to wrapping up here, but yeah. I wanted to hard pitch you. And I feel like the answer is no. Yeah. But this is my this is the idea I came up with uh, this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Um, my kids were sick, and I was sitting at home, yeah. and this I was thinking about gags. Yeah. Um, is we towards is it towards the end of the show, maybe like the last song of the Saturday night show. Yeah. We have crew members bring out. You know, I think twin beds is fine. Maybe a yeah. full bed. Maybe a you know a okay. queen if you're really like space. Going. Everyone gets a bed. We yeah. say good night. <laughs> you know, we do, we do our classic rock bow, and then we all go to our beds. We don't leave the stage. House lights go up, but we, we go to our beds. Yeah. The crowd leaves. We sleep on the garden stage. Maybe, and maybe play like a lullaby. Something. Oh, that's yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. That's really nice, yeah. So people know they're, they kind of quiet down as they're, yeah. as they're leaving. And then when doors open, the alarm, you know, the alarm goes off, and we wake up, we stretch. But one thing that's important to me... We actually sleep there. No, no, I, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah, not, yeah, it's, not yeah, a, yeah. it's a right. gag, like a visual gag. But no, it's, but we're it's, sleeping. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're sleeping at the garden. Everybody goes home, grab a coffee, come back fresh in the yeah. morning, mm-hmm. and then again, completely different set. Except um, for Avon. Except, except for Avon. Except for Avon. Yeah. Well, so that's an overview of the beginning of the tour. People in the rest of the world, don't worry, we're definitely coming. You know, it's been pointed out to me that reading the tour poster. Yeah. And the name of the new album, which you can pre-order now, is called Only God Was Above Us. Yes. But you can, if you want to, read yeah. it as Only God Was Above U.S. Oh. So people are waiting. Is there going to be an Only God Was Above U.K.? Only God Was Above Uck. Only God Was Above uh, Uck. U. Yeah. U or wh- wherever. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Um, there will be. Yeah. Yes. I don't know what we can say yeah, or not th- say. But. Yeah, that's phase two. Um, so don't worry. We're coming to all the places we love to play. Four and a half albums in stores now. Check it out. Only God Was Above Us pre-order. If you wanted to get some tickets, honestly, some of the shows we talked about are sold out. You know, but you know, whatever, figure it out. Um, the tour, the tour is up, and uh, we'll see you real soon. Thank you. Bear, you got the fire. You I'll take it. care of the fire. I'm All gonna right. soak it up for see next, you next time. See you man. next time. <laughs>